Warehouse Case um, VAR 2016-09 by Mr. Joel Bedford. He is proposing to construct a house within the North Lake subdivision. The board may recall we've done a number of variances in this subdivision. This particular case has to do with the front yard setback. Um, the concrete slab has been poured and it doesn't meet our setback requirements. 30 feet is the requirement and slab partially is like 20 feet um, from the property line. So they're asking for a two variance. Um, you know, I believe the applicant is here that can answer any questions. It's just a miscommunication between the builder, property owner, and All right. So right the All right. Any questions, any discussion from the board at this time? Thank you, Carmelo. Is there anyone here in behalf of this case who would like to speak or give us any additional information? Yes. But I guess your name and address for the record. Toby Black, 830 Collins Road, Whitman, Georgia. Okay. okay. Mr. Ben Good and I had a mis miscommunication on the telephone on the setbacks. He somehow got mixed up and it was not malicious. We just way the human error just made a mistake. Um, I, other than that, I really don't know what to say. I mean, it's one of those things that happened. I wish it wouldn't happen. That's really all I got to say. All right. Is anyone here, anyone else here in support of this case? Is there anyone here in opposition to this case or anyone here that has questions about this request? Carmelo, is there any contact to your office on this? I'm sorry, ma'am? The ones that's talking, I can't hear them back here. Ma'am, I will ask them to speak up. Uh, basically, from what has been presented, staff did not see a problem with the variance, and the, vari the error was apparently caused by a miscommunication between the builder and the homeowner. Concrete and, man. Uh, what? Me, the concrete man. Okay, the concrete man that laid out the slab and the builder, there was some miscommunication about what was supposed to be done and it didn't get done. And the request is to allow them to use the slab as is with a 10 foot variance to a front yard setback instead of having to basically break out, jackhammer out the entire slab and start over because you go to cut 10 foot off the front of the building, you pretty much got to take the entire slab out. Is there any other information you would like on that? Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. My name is Toby Blanton. Mr. Blanton, I noticed you said you had equipment. Have you poured any slabs in Belmont or Lands County before? Yes, ma'am. All my life. Are you not familiar with the setback requirements on residential lots? Well, when you have someone give them to you over the telephone, um, all you can do is put that, that information that you receive. And that's what I was given. That's what I went with. And um, I went two or three days there. No, what this didn't get caught. I guess what I'm saying, I read in the report that the lending officer is the one that the lending institution called it because they recognized the setbacks were not right. And so that was why I asked, have you done this previously in Valdosta or Lands County? Oh, yeah. Because that's pretty common knowledge, I think, within most contractors. It is, but like I say, all you can do is, is go off the information that you get, and um, that's what I did. That's where we're at. I have a question, too. Okay. Um, so all of the houses that are on that street are set back at least 30 feet, and this one is set back 20 feet, so that means it stands 10 feet in front of those other houses. So if you look down the row of houses, it's sticking out. It, it does stick out, but it don't stick out 10 feet down. Um, I would say four to six foot forward. Um, 
There was something in the zoning letter that said something about a double carport uh, change the setbacks, and I, I I don't know why he told me 30 foot, 20 foot in the back, and that's where the house is at. He said to measure 30 foot from the road, and we should have 20 foot in the back, and that's what I did. I put the four corners in, formed the house up, we put the dirt in, plumber came. Inspections, poured it, and here we are. So inspections then, catch this? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. It was inspected. Uh, the the permit card setback just did not get put on the permit card, so the inspectors went there. They didn't see that part, but it just it wasn't shown. So that's that's what happened. Are we saying there's something that should be on the card that would reward this from happening again, perhaps? Yes, yes sir. They're, they're, yes, sir. They're always on the card. And who puts them on the card? The permit cards. Okay, so the permit clerk didn't put it on the card. Yes, sir. And who puts them on the card? The permit clerk. Okay. Ma'am, did that answer your question? Okay. Is there anyone else here in opposition or does anyone here have a question about what we are discussing? Any other discussions among board members concerning the case before us before I try to call the question? We got a couple of errors that resulted in concrete on the ground with pipes in it. It didn't fit. I entertain a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman, I recommend that we approve this variance citing B and G of the status. I have a motion from Dr. Housel to grant the request as presented citing B and G. Do I have a second? I have a second from Mr. McCall. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? You got your count, Tracy? Yes, sir. Good luck with it, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. The next case we'll call is VAR 2016-10, Jake Weisenbaker, Coward and Coward LLC, 6514 the Olympia Road, Valdosta. Yes, sir. Our second request involves a variance to the standard County has for outdoor recreation facilities. In this case, the EA zoning does allow for outdoor recreation, and what we have is Olympia Bend, which is a gun range, um, a quail shooting preserve, and they are currently in operation. Um, we're trying to get them permitted, um, get them licensed and permitted, and one of the issues that popped up was that they could not meet our minimum buffer standards. In this case, the properties that are highlighted in yellow on the screen, um, the shot there, consists of a church and two single family residences. And they are required to provide a 45 foot wide buffer with a fence. And he's requesting a variance to that requirement. Um, the, the property is heavily vegetated and if he was to construct a fence, he would have to tear down a lot of the vegetation, and we would rather leave it undisturbed. Um, the staff is supportive of that. We understand it. Um, we are recommending approval. We're just trying to get them legal. And the existing stand that they're trying to leave undisturbed it is pretty close to the 45 feet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. Actually, the property is highlighted, it consists of several hundred acres, and the closest shooting range or target um, range is about a thousand feet away. So it sits almost like in the middle of the property. Um, we've been working with them for probably about two years. Um, and this came about as a noise issue for the residents that live out in the area, but they were able to reduce the noise um, some, um, but the use is allowed in the EA zone. Uh, but I think there's still some ongoing conversations.
conversation between them and the new property owners. They don't just like it there. But the use is allowed. Bolivia is allowed by right. By right. The only, the only complication is the lack of a fence. That's correct. Okay. I have a question about the fence. The fence, any fence, or it has to be, it has a, to be six to eight feet high, opaque, privacy fence. Is there a, like a field fence there now? Yeah. I'll be there. There's a field fence. Um, I know there's one behind the church. Hector. Well, how much buffer has to be removed on the side of the fence? We're talking about feet. Distance to be able to put a fence up. How much of this pole do you have to take that? I'm not sure. The applicant is here. And he was going to construct the fence, and so they got out there, and it was just too much for him. But he can see all that. Okay, and the fence requirement is only on the property line for those three parcels, not the entire. Hundreds of acres. That is correct. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussions from the board to staff? I'm up there. I'm going to follow up before I move on. Thank you, Carmel. Is anyone here in support or is the applicant here? And if so, would you like to come give us any additional information? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak in support? Yeah, I do. I if, you, if you're in support, then you're in order. If you're in opposition, I'm in opposition. Then wait just a minute. Anyone else here in support of this application? Who would like to speak on behalf of it? All right, is there anyone here in opposition? And if so, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address. I'm Richard McDonald, 6429 Madison Highway, Dallas, Georgia. These guys shoot on my front porch. I live at uh, Here is my house right here, right there. And they got they got three shooting stands right here. Oh, uh, and I don't I don't know why the owner is on it. It's agricultural land. Sir, this is not a sir. This is not a rezone. Okay. This this is simply a request for okay, a variance. Okay, I'm gonna still say what I'm gonna say. It's out of the course of land, and they got a sports club down there. So how does this happen? If it was me that helped me in jail. But anyway, besides, besides the point of that, uh, there ain't no thousand feet between my house and the, the first target that Mr. Wise back here was talking about. There's three right down in front of my house, and I can throw a block all three of them. You know where I live. No, I live on the corner of Payton Church Road and 31. <coughs> I 
you're, you're not, not even a right of way. You're, you're not even to throw a rock across. You're not even touching our property. Well, no, hang, hang on, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You are here to address this board. Right. You are not to address the okay. office. Okay. Well, anyway, that's what I'm here for. Okay. This has been going on now for two years, or right? how long? I don't object to the shooting range, but uh, they got 500 acres of land now. Why don't they put it away from the highway and away from our house? One part, two people, one's here today, one's not. It's even closer to their house than it is to mine. Uh, because they live on the opposite side of the house and I live on the opposite side of the house. And uh, if, if they want this noise, why don't they take it over there to Charles on the old plot of the road and put it inside of Charles Calvin's house? Oh, uh, you know? Okay, sir. The first thing I'm going to say is they can put the range there by right. It does not. It is not an infringement or anything to the zone. It is allowed by right. Well, I thought that that was what the purpose of this meeting to rezone. No, this meeting is not to rezone. This meeting. In other words, it can stay farm. It can stay agricultural right. or other related uses. Yeah. And the shooting range is allowed by right. What we are here to discuss. Why are they even send the letters out if it's, everything is illegal? Because they are asking for relief to part of the variance, I mean, part of the code. And the code says on the three parcels way up here that are on that side, those parcels have to have a fence along that piece of property line, not the whole property line, just that piece. The request is they would like to not have to tear into the existing natural <coughs> buffer, the trees that are there, in order to put up a fence. They can continue to shoot, they can do everything that they're currently doing by right. If they put the fence up, or if this board grants them a variance to putting the fence up. We can't, we can't stop them from shooting. In other words, this meeting is just a joke. No, sir. This meeting is not a joke. Well, this is... This, you can't do nothing about something. That's what it is. A joke. You're asking us to do something that we cannot do. It's not in the power of this board to tell them they can't do it because it is legal in the code. What they are doing is legal in the code, except for the fence along those three properties. All we right. cannot stop them to do it. We can, we can make them put the fence up, or we can grant them relief from the fence in some fashion. But that's the only question that's before this board today. Well, I don't care less about the fence, I'm the whole night with each other and I understand what you're saying, but the problem is we do not have the power. It's not against the rules of what they're doing. We cannot make them quit doing it. We can't make them move it on the property. They are totally legal. In other words, I can get on my side of the road and start shooting at the neighbors, right? No, sir, because you are closer than that to the property line, and the state game and fish rules say there is a minimum that you have to be from a public road or from a habitat uh, house. And feet? they are apparently, it's 300 feet, sir. 300 feet. Well, if, if, if my memory is correct, from my hunting days, you're not supposed to shoot within 300 feet of a road, public road, or 300 feet well, in a residential. Because there ain't no 300 feet. Then, then that is a question for the game and fish people, the, the game warden. That well, they ain't do nothing either. That's not something this board can control. We, we do not control that. Somebody else does. The only thing that we're talking about here is the fish. Okay. Well, I can't go on the other side of the roads because I don't drink, but I couldn't go on that up from the liquor store. 
Sir, I don't know what the liquor store requires to put it in on the property out there. In that other one. words, what I'm saying, if you want to sell a million dollars, you can do is please, right? No, sir. He is doing what the code says he can do, regardless of how much money they may or may not have. Okay. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak? Hold on, Hound. Six four way five Madison Highway. We have to, this one is racket seven days a week in a community that just about everybody is retired. If we go, if you grant this bears, the one thing I ask you to do, for that property not be in a conservation where they pay their equal taxes. I do not know whether it's in conservation or not, and that is something that this board, a lot, a lot of agriculture land is. I, I understand, sir. I know exactly what you're talking about, but whether it is in conservation or not does not affect the question that is before this board. This board is simply to decide whether to grant them relief from putting up a fence along the church property and the two other properties. Everything else that they're doing is totally legal. Everything else they're doing is totally allowed by right according to the code. Well, I want to stick to the code, that's all we can do. If, it, if, if they meet the code regulations, there's nothing this board can do. Unless you grant them a variance. If we grant them the variance, they may not have to put a fence up. They may not have to put as much fence up. Or the board has the power to say, put the fence up. But we do not have the power to make them move their operation because it meets the requirements as best we understand it because it is granted by the regulations themselves. There's nothing in it that says they can't do this. As far as the noise, you know, from what they have said, they have tried to make an effort to abate some of the noise. Don't know about whether they have or have not, but there again, the regulations do not say that they have to shoot within certain hours or days or anything like that. It's agricultural, it night. is open land. Or at night. If they are shooting at night by lights or something, then that would be a question to be presented back to code enforcement to see if it's allowed. That's not something that we would be able to handle. That would be go back to Lowndes County about. Well, that was a fun deal then. They got a committee that can't do nothing. I don't know why they got the committee. Sir, please, you're out of order. Uh, that's good. Is there anyone else here in opposition or anyone else have something they would like for this board to take into consideration? Carmela, was there any? I'm sorry, ma'am. I will just say something. Please come to the lectern, ma'am. I will. Ma'am, we're trying to treat everybody here with respect. Please try to treat us with respect. I will. We're here, we're appointed, we're trying to do a job. Don't tell my wife what to do. Sir, I'm talking to you. Sir, you're out of order. I'm out of order if you say Okay, this is what I want to say. My yes, name is Peggy McCall. Yes, ma'am. I'm Richard's wife. And we do live directly across from it. And what I would like to tell the board is you have no idea what kind of weapons are being shot down there. That doesn't have anything to do, I know, with zoning. But how are you going to live with your conscience when one of those high-powered rifles, one of those bullets strays and not only hit somebody in the community, but probably somebody on the highway. And they do shoot high-powered rifles because they never stop. It's just one shot continually after another and another and another. There is alcoholic beverages there. You put alcoholic beverages and a gun together, that's a dangerous combination. And 
My question to you as a board is, how are you going to feel when later on down the road somebody gets killed because of this? Yes, ma'am. And the answer that I'm going to give and that somebody else would like to answer is, number one, what they are doing is allowed by right. They are not going against zoning. I totally agree with you. Alcohol and firearms do not mix. Totally agree. If that is the case, then that's something that needs to be addressed by somebody besides this board. That this board cannot control that and do not regulate that. There's one other there. thing I would like to say. Uh, there is a church there. It has been there for years. I think it is so disrespectful for them to shoot while, and this this is a black church, but they, we have lived there 56 years, and we have watched this church grow in size and in number, and these, this congregation of members, and um, they, they have to listen to that shooting while they're having church. I don't understand that. Ma'am, I understand what you're saying. I sympathize with them. But here again, there's nothing in the code that says they cannot do this. There's nothing that we can say that says you cannot do this. It is allowed by right. My only suggestion would be for the church talk with them and say, can you please refrain from shooting between the hours of such and such and such and such on Sunday while we have service? It would be something that would be worked out with them if they could work it out. This board cannot regulate that because it's not within our powers. Okay, I have one last thing to say. There is shooting at night. And I think that there's I no, live there. I hear it. There's, there's, no, there's no regulation that says they cannot shoot at night. It's allowed by right. That's all I can tell you. If, if, if you have a problem with it, talk to your county commissioner. We have. The county commissioners set the code for the ULDC. Right now, unless they change it, they can do exactly what they're doing. They are totally legal. They are totally within their rights to do what they are doing. If there are other circumstances, then you need to talk to your county commissioner. We, Good, Pastor Judge. We have. Sir, I, I'm just telling you what the options are. That's all I'm trying to do. All I've had to say is, you have heard what I have said. If something happens when somebody gets killed, Every one of you sitting on this board are going to be held accountable for it because you knew it was going on. Ma'am, we have no power to stop this. We have no power to regulate. It is allowed by right in the code. Well, yes, yes, ma'am. And Ms. McDonald, I went down there personally today. I usually don't vote on any issue that I don't go to the site and look at. As a hunter, I'm aware of safety, and I'm familiar with using guns. I rode this property. I rode it with Mr. Weissenbaker. And I can tell you, first of all, to the board, I think a fence would defeat your purpose because it's so thick, it's like a jungle. Um, from the nearest stand, and I don't know if you've seen this, you want to look at this real quick? Okay. Um, from the nearest stand to the property line, I could not even see, the woods were so thick, I couldn't even see through it. And we had just been back right behind the church. I went on the property, did my own personal inspection, I don't know how, I think it would be virtually impossible with the thickness of those woods for any bullet to go through those woods out on the highway. Um, we hunt, we have farmland in Lowndes County. We are very concerned about that ourselves. I understand the noise issue could be 
a real problem for y'all. But like Mr. Strickland said, we're not in a position to change what they're using the land for. We're only here to decide fence or no fence. And that's all we can do. Okay. Well, I, I've had, you know, I say, we, we have been to the county commission. Two years ago, we went. But we got there. Uh, Ms. Bradwell, is there an ordinance about shooting at night? Not that I'm aware of. Um, the county does have a noise ordinance. Um, it wouldn't come under that? They can, they can file a complaint, but it's 10 o'clock at night. Ma'am, you said you went down there today. Sir, would you please come to the lectern? Did you hear any shooting today? I did. There were people shooting. I was not where you live or Mr. McDonald, but I was on the property and I did hear the shooting. Well, that was miles away of what normally is. So it was due to real life. But that's not nothing to do with this experience. I realize that. If you're having problems with noise, then you need to talk to the county code enforcement. And they can tell you what, if anything, option you have. And I know there's a, a lower level that's got to be in the other certain level. And the code enforcement can answer that question. Any other discussion before we try to call the question?
Our primary concern was that of safety, you know, in case of an emergency, you know, would emergency services be able to get back there? Would the fire rescue department say they have the situations pretty often in the county, and as long as that dirt, dirt path is there, then they, they see no reason to deny their variance. Um, Any questions, any discussion from the board? To your knowledge, as long as he maintains the 30 foot width and overhead clearance for emergency vehicles, there should be no problem. As long as it's maintained, I don't believe the applicant maintains it. It's the, the property owner that owns the property to the um, east there that maintains the property. They do a lot of harvesting. So they keep it pretty clear. Um, it's only, when I went out there, it was only way one of the car can access the property at a time. It's very narrow. Um, but it's been in, in existence for a number of years. The county engineer even said it's probably um, a prescription by easement, meaning they couldn't close it even if they wanted to, because there are properties that access that, that road. All right, any other questions, any discussions? Anyone here in support of this application? Can I get your name and address for the record, please? My name is Cameron Hines. Address is uh, 2979 Howell Road. Uh, I purchased this land several years ago with the intent of trying to move the mobile home that I currently own to the lot. Uh, the adjacent property belongs to my brother who also uses the same service road to access this property. I uh, was unaware of some of the rules, you know, the zoning rules and regulations involved in it when I did purchase it, but it was, I got it at a tax auction, so I got a good deal on it, and I wanted to be out next to my brother. So uh, this uh, property used to have a mobile home on it years ago. It currently has a functioning septic tank system already in place, uh, and we have a working well uh, adjacent to the property. I'm assuming you are aware that the health department will have to come out and give the okay. I've already had uh, Kyle Cogus come out and inspect the septic tank system. I've already got an okay. Uh, I've got a letter of that. I just, I just wanted that in the minutes in case it comes up. Any questions, any discussions? Thank you, Cameron. Thanks, sir. Does anyone else here would like to speak in support of this application? Terry Hines, 5573 Green Road. I actually live in the property that's connected to the property that we're talking about. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that I also help maintain the road. Uh, please there because my house is at the other end, so I have tractors and we have you know, periodically throughout the year just trim back road up foliage and what constantly get vehicles back there. Log trucks and tractors frequently go back there. Uh, Bob Langdale owns all the land to one side, and he, uh, he uses the, that road right there to access all his land. So it's, it's open for big machinery and stuff like that. So it has continual trucks and tractors. Our only concern is, like I said, the ambulance or fire truck or something. Yeah, if, there's two, very well, very if, well. if there's overhanging limbs and they won't go in there, then when you I first already in, we had a fire and my stepson set and the fire department had to come out there, so they uh, they were uh, they were able to be out there and everything's fine. I worked for the office the department. They all know where I live, I promise you. All right. Any questions, any discussions? Is anyone else here in support of this application? Is anyone here in opposition to this application or anyone has questions about what's being requested? Was there any contact with your office, Carmel? No, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, any other discussions? Can I entertain a motion on this request, please? I make a motion to approve the variance as presented, citing D. I have a motion on the floor. I'm sorry, what? I second. Okay, I have motion to grant the request as presented, citing criteria D. 
I have second from John. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it. Hope everything works out. Okay. The next case we will call is VAR 2016-12, Alpha Lounge Development Authority, on behalf of Langdale Capital Assets, Inc., Rocky Road, Valdez. Oh, that's a handful. Yes, sir. Our last case before you, um, the last county case before you, is a variance by Global Associates um, representing Project Max. Um, I believe many of you have heard of a industrial prospect coming to Niles County. We're not at liberty to say what it is other than Project Max. It's a container of business. Um, the UODC has standards for which an industrial use um, needs to be. They're asking for three variances. Um, the first variance is to the maximum height requirement. What I put before you um, some schematics. Um, they are proposing to construct a batch house. The batch house exceeds the maximum height requirement of 100 feet. I believe it's proposed at 130, 140, 140 feet. Um, the batch house will um, house things as it conveyors, silos, etc. a lot of big equipment. Um, staff looked at this and it's recommended approval um, to the variant site. They are also proposing a smokestack. It doesn't have to meet our maximum height requirement. Um, the staff will be the problem because of the, the proximity that the industrial use will be from the road. The second variance is to our loading space design requirements. The UOBC you will see have this standard that the larger your building is, the more loading spaces you have to, to have. And in this case, they're proposing a 396 square foot building, which will require about 40 loading spaces. Um, they don't need that many, according to them. They have a similar uh, business elsewhere in our country, and 40 spaces is just too much for them. They, they don't need it. So staff is supportive of that. They know that's what they need better than we And then the last variance is that of our loading dock orientation. We require loading docks to be located on the side or rear of the building. As you can see, I tried to highlight it in yellow. Their loading dock is right in the front. But their building also sits about 1,000 feet from the proposed road. You can see on the schematic at the bottom um, the road, the proposed road. It was initially um, going to stop right where you see the cul-de-sac, but they're going to extend that road further, further east. Um, and then there's some out partials that will be uh, laid out in front of the building. So they're going to be way back from the road, and we're supportive of, of their loading docks being as they are closing. So with that, staff is recommending approval to all three variances. And the applicant's representative is here uh, to answer any specific questions. Any questions from the board or from Ella or discussion at this time? I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, the height requirement isn't um, going to be a problem for the airport? No, they are outside. That's one of the first things we looked at. They are outside of the airport overlay district. They, I wish I would have put that on the, the map there, but they are way outside of that overlay district. And then the, they have their little private driveway entrance here, and then uh, comes around to the right there, their main entrance. So the loading docks are going to be beyond where their main entrance is. So somebody coming to visit the building won't be driving past these 20 truck doors. That is correct. So that, it's sort of like on the side, but it's on the side facing the front. Okay. Any other questions? What is the nearest? <clears throat> land owner to this tract of land. I noticed when I was on Rock Ford Road to the, I guess it would be the southwest of this tract, there was a very attractive entrance to what I presume was a residential area, a residential home. The nearest residence or the nearest Privately property? owned property. There is um, the King family owns property that's going to be adjacent to 
use of the property. Um, and this is already an industrial park out there. Um, and there was a sign that said Kindling. Is this part of Kindling no. Industrial Park? I, I believe this is a separate industrial. Um, it's not part of Kindling. But the nearest property owner is just north and west. Is the smokestack beyond the added 40 feet height? The smokestack is it's going to be shorter than the back house. Um, I think that's proposed at 120. Any other questions? Any discussions at this time? The number of employees here, can you give us a 200? 200. 200 plus, and there's a, a high expectation that there's going to be a lot of, we've already had a lot of inquiries about support services coming in around it. So it's going to exceed 200, maybe not just with this facility, but with some of the other support. Any other discussion or questions? Is is anyone else here in support of this application or would like to speak on behalf? Is anyone here in opposition to this request or has questions about what is being requested? Armella, was there any contact to your office? Yes, sir. We did receive a number of calls, um, more inquiries than anything. Um, one of the um, letters that went out had, instead of loading space, had landing space, so that sparked a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of helicopters yes, coming yes, up. Yes, a lot of helicopters <laughs> and things. Um, but mostly it was inquiries. No, no real opposition, just questions. That's right. All right. Any other discussion? Any other questions from the board? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I make a motion to approve all three variances. Criteria, D. I have a motion on the floor from Mr. McCall to grant the request as presented, citing criteria D. I'll second. I have a second from Mr. Alvarado. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it, gentlemen. I hope it works out. Thank you, Carmella. That is the end of the Carmella show. <laughs> now we get the Tracy show. Oh, the Pat show. The next case we'll call is City of Alaska case APP 2016-11, State and Plantation, Southeast Corner Interprimer Road in Brookfield Drive, Alaska, Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know why I'm pulling that. It doesn't work. Um, <laughs> Not even plugged in. No, no, no. Well, there's some issues we're trying to get resolved. Something we think that they have a wall that's not quite hooked up right. 
So I'll try and speak loud. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, this is a variance request for state and plantation um, on behalf of Greg Murray, um, who is the applicant requesting a variance to the provision in our inner perimeter road corridor overlay district uh, that deals with the lot frontage. In that overlay district, um, all new lots are required to have at least 200 feet of frontage along the inner perimeter road if they front inner perimeter road. This subject property is fairly large. Pardon me just a moment. Subject property is fairly large. It's the vacant tract of land of the Perimeter Park Shopping Center. It's all the lands to the north and east of Publix that are currently vacant. Um, it's what we call a parent parcel. Um, however, what you see on the screen is the subject portion of the subject property, and it's about two acres. And it is directly in front of Publix. Um, there's a private access road network which is already constructed. And this is essentially the vacant tract of land between Murphy Express and the Perimeter two legs of that private road. Um, that site plan is here, so what the property looks like from the internal intersection of the corner of Publix. This is how it looks from across the street on the front of the road. See the frontage of the existing trees. And we'll zoom in on that frontage area. And then next door is the Murphy Express. And then behind it to the south is the public shopping center. Um, site plan is one currently by physical description, it's one tract of land, two acres of, um, of property. It has about 290 feet of frontage along the perimeter. Uh, they're proposing to sell the property in pieces, which means subdividing it into two parcels um, with about 142 and 148 feet of frontage, respectively, instead of the 200. In the site plan, you see the first user, which is the credit unit, which would occupy approximately the eastern half and the western half would be later for subject development. So the variance is because these two lots, separately, do not have enough frontage on the Cumber Road, which I think that is killing the road. <coughs> so this plan is in your package. Also in your packet is an alternative drawing. You have the proposed site plan in your packet, also an alternative drawing, and the only difference is this shows an L-shaped lot for the credit union, which would put all 290 feet of the inner perimeter frontage on that one parcel. Uh, part of the reason this was even thought about is both lots will require stormwater detention, and just like the Murphy Express property to the west, the logical place engineering-wise is for the pond to go on the north end of the property along the front of the road. So this will get the entire pond onto one parcel with the credit unit, and the left the property would have its frontage on the private road system instead of in front of the road. So this configuration actually meets the code requirements, and no variance is needed. And all of this is described here in the packet. Um, so because of an alternative that meets the code, staff does not see hardship in the variance, and we're recommending denial. However, just like it's stated in the packet, there's really no difference in terms of even on the ground between their proposal and this proposal. Um, you both would have the credit union and some building on the lot next door who would look exactly the same from in front of the road or from the roads behind it. The only difference is, is how the property line 
is drawn on paper on the recorded subdivision plan. Um, in terms of intent of the regulations, keep in mind this is a code requirement that is peculiar only to this overlay district. It's not something in the great zoning districts, but just the overlay. Um, the main consideration in the intent is to reduce the number of driveways or access points onto Interpremer Road by having lots with a little bit larger frontage. Um, the other consideration of a lesser degree is to create a land use pattern that's a little less congested along the front of the road. Um, so what SAP is acknowledging and the applicant's defense of all of this is they are meeting the intent of the regulations. The shopping center for Printer Park and some of the others nearby use a system of reverse frontage roads so that properties, I mean the out parcels, do not have their own access to an perimeter. They use a series of internal streets with access that is well spaced. So they meet that intent very clearly. Um, the other is <coughs> that the congestion aspect is somewhat mitigated by the fact that you have a pond in the front yard along the perimeter and the development has to be further back off of the perimeter so you don't have that crowded effect that might come along the perimeter road. Um, so again, SAP is not supportive of the various requests because they can't meet the letter of the code very easily. Um, but if you should grant a variance to them, on page two of your report, are three conditions that staff would like to see, which is really to make it look good, which is what they propose. The first one is no direct vehicular access onto the front of the road. The second one is require at least 140 feet of lot frontage for each lot. So in other words, you don't get 200 foot lot and the 90 foot lot, but it's basically as they are proposing. Number three is to require shared detention pond and shared internal driveways and access to the abundant private roads. In other words, this whole thing would still function like one development as if it were not subdivided. Okay. So that would help alleviate it. Another thing to point out in your packets, if you have the variance review criteria, you see the applicant responses, please ignore staff's responses to that. That is something that did not get cut and pasted properly or saved before it got printed. Um, staff did prepare responses to these, which I sort of summarized just a moment ago. But they please ignore the written language in your packet. And I apologize for the confusion. The applicant actually asked me about it right before the meeting. And that's when I did notice. Um, otherwise, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Yes, ma'am? I got two or three, so I've got to ask them okay. again. Um, first question mm -hmm. The person that will benefit the most from making this aesthetically attractive is the applicant. Right. One could argue that, yes, because, because they the applicant the still land. owns the other surrounding properties. Okay. Point um, on this alternate property drawing, this plan B that y'all have come up with, is the retaining pond going to be across this front Correct. from that whole L Correct. of the, and the whole leg of the a staff drawn sketch. That is uh -huh. not an engineer drawn. Um, the pond might be a little bit wider than that. It might not. It all depends on the depth and the storage line that we're trying to achieve. But it will be on that leg. It would be all the way across the front. Yes. That's the idea behind that drawing. So that's the way it would be owned by one party as opposed to shared. Correct. It would be owned by one party. The other, the new lot without the pond would have access to it. Um, I mean, there's different ways to engineer. One is you create the two lots where they're going to go in the frontage each have their own pond, so you have to sort of burn between the two ponds, which is sort of a silly and efficient way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's easier just to have one pond across the front of the property when crossing it, or in this case, one pond across the front that is entirely within one parcel. I did discuss with our engineering department, they have no preference one way or the other. Um, if the plan. pond is joint between the two properties, then there's got to be something in writing that allows both properties <coughs> access to is there any negative for an owner having a piece of property configured like this? It's just more real estate under one parcel, but it's not a buildable area. It's a pension home. Um, not cheap for the tax assessors, but I don't know if they were treated any differently or not. The only thing that that configuration would require, which is going to be required eventually anyway, is this private road system is private property. It exists as an 
easement through there for access, uh, but it's going to require the planning of that roadway as a private roadway. Otherwise, we're creating a landlocked parcel. So it might, by doing this scenario, it might trigger that a little sooner rather than later. But it is eventually going to be. Any others? One question that I was going to ask, I'm assuming from the drawing that these two parcels will actually, you can drive from one to the other. Correct. I mean, but you're not going to, they're, they're not going to try to tie in to Murphy because that will probably create a short enough traffic. And Murphy might not like that. Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy might not appreciate it. If, if you look at the perimeter areas, I mean, obviously they should not have access to any perimeter. They were showing one broadway onto that north-south leg of the road, but then on the east leg of the road to their south, the critical things that need to line up with the driveway going into Publix. Which, you know, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And so that is why that driveway needs to be a shared. They've got to be. They've got to be able to cross from one parcel to the next right. in turn. Correct. Which is somewhat of a requirement, regardless of which scenario they go with. Any other questions? Any other discussions? Anyone here in support of this application would like to speak on behalf of this application? Good afternoon. I'm, uh, my name is Roy Murray. I'm the managing partner of uh, State Plantation and the developer of this property. Uh, I wanted to give you a little history. Uh, we started advancing planning this whole property uh, back in the early 90s, uh, 1994. Uh, and Matt at that time was with regional, uh, or shortly thereafter, was that with the regional planning uh, group. Uh, so I worked with him for you know, all these years. And we paid particular attention to master planning this whole area. We hired Ken Rickett to do the initial planning. And then we had hired had our Atlanta South Associates of Atlanta, which is a well-known planning firm, to also look at the situation. And realizing that the traffic pattern was going to be an issue in the future as well as density, we planned a series of internal roads to limit the access on the perimeter. There, there are three crossovers that were planned and installed early on perimeter between Oak Street Extension and Phoenix, only three. And uh, there's a series of internal roads that tie into each one of those crossovers. And the reason for that is so you will not have driveways directly onto perimeter uh, from each parcel. Uh, if you, uh, can I pull up the aerial? Um, uh, there you go. Okay, from Brookfield Road, which is a, a public drive, and Lake Lord Drive, that intersection, to the, uh, there's only two accesses between there and uh, this is 1,200 feet, excuse me. Yeah, there's only two From here to this next crossover, 1,200 feet. There's only two accesses on the perimeter, and will only be two accesses on the perimeter in that distance. So that's one drive per every 600 feet. And that's versus if we had planned 200 frontage lots all around here, we, we could have six driveways. So we've gone from six to two by, by planning the development in this way. This is a very heavily traveled road back here, and it takes a lot of the pressure off of the perimeter. Takes a lot of pressure off this intersection because a lot of people that go to Publix and Walmart like to turn in here and, and take that one out. The reason we ask for fairness is if you take the, the optional configuration that Matt showed, it would not require fairness. It creates an <coughs> odd-shaped subdivision, number one. 
Number two, it, penal, uh, it will penalize the purchaser of the property because the second parcel would be smaller and generally you price these the property in dollars per acre. So they would be they would have less uh, uh, less of an option to recoup their money uh, if, if you stay with the standard configuration, if it was configuration that Matt showed that had most of the acreage on the credit union line. So it's, it's just to me a weird configuration <coughs> and it does nothing. It really buys you absolutely nothing. We're in total agreement with the uh, restrictions that Matt's put on it. We have no plans for any driveways on the corner. Uh, you see the site plan where we've got hand connectivity at two points between the two lots. Uh, and uh, we also, uh, being the owner and developer of the property, the surrounding property, we maintain approval rights on anything that goes out there. So, in order for the credit union, if they got ready to sell that parcel, they would have to come to us and get architectural approval, landscape approval, signage approval, and would have to meet the restricted covenants of the subdivision, which are more strict than the city requirements. The landscaping, if you've been out there, um, is, is more strict than what the city requires. Um, on the detention pond, um, have, have any of you uh, noticed a detention pond in front of the market? <coughs> okay. um, it's very well done. It's landscaped. You hardly even know what's there, really. It's, it's probably as good a detention pond as, as you can do and have it framed on the road. This detention pond would basically mirror that. Be landscaped in the same way. Um, uh, you know, it would be well done. It would be sided. Uh, and, and maintain. Um, the way it would be done if you had two separate lots is you could create an easement on that front piece and actually tie those two together. Tie the, whenever the second one was developed, you could tie that into the first one by creating an easement. There. Um, or you could have a totally separate one, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's, it's less expensive to do, to tie it together, really, because you're getting capacity uh, by doing that. Um, so in, in a nutshell, we uh, respectfully ask that you approve this on the basis of uh, us having master plan this where we have, where we're meeting the two concerns that the city had, which was one, limited access on the perimeter, and two, the density of the development is mitigated by over 200 feet of frontage of the, uh, of the uh, wetlands, which are directly east of this. So if you were to take that 200 feet of frontage and divide it between these two lots, it would way more than 200 feet. So we really need an intent, I think, of the ordinance, and I think Matt is acknowledged that. So, um, respectfully ask that you grant the appearance on, on that basis. Uh, and also on the basis, I think it would meet, at least meet three of these conditions, A, B, and G, require all the appearances. So on that basis, we ask that you approve it. All right, sir. Any questions, any discussion from the board at this time? Um, I, I had a question. Um, one of the recommendations to us, if variance is granted was a shared detention pond and shared internal driveways and access to the budding private roads. Um, the shared detention pond recommendation, um, you don't foresee any issues with uh, I know it'll be less expensive to do it that way. Uh, I guess know, my question would be agree, if a I, separate owner coming along later on would have to accept the, the ownership and maintenance responsibility of a shared detention pond. That's right, they would have to share that. Okay. And, and that would be something that really the, that the owner, we would no longer be the owner, so the owner would have to work that out with whoever he sells it to. Right. Okay. Thank 
Okay. Any um, other? I'm sorry, but you got something else, Mike? I just I had one other question about I guess the and this is more of an engineering question overall. Um, I mean, we're, you're really talking about a detention pond that's going to be roughly the same size. I mean, given the amount of hardscape area that's going to be on this lot and the size of both of these lots right. compared to Murphy, it's going to be almost exactly the same size. So I guess my question is, if you grant the variance to subdivide, you're going to, so you're going to design it now, but then you're going to have to rip out half of that existing detention pond when the second owner comes along, right? Unless you take the unless you take it all the way to the property boundary and then they just have one to it when they get both. Right, but you'd still have to rip off the end of it. So that's the, right. the, the existing the, this existing owner is still going to have some cost in this detention pond which they're going to have that's to right. waste. I mean, my preference would be not to put that restriction. We'll accept that, but my preference would be not to put that on there because it's going to look the same either way. It's going to be landscaped. It's going to be hidden and maintained and uh, it just creates a coordination issue between the two owners. Okay. Yep. That, that was what I was Any other questions? Any other discussions? Thank you. Anyone? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here that is in opposition or has questions about what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office concerning this request? Ladies and gentlemen, unless you have something further to talk about or discuss, can I entertain a motion on this request? I'd like a motion to approve the request, the variance request, with the following conditions, that there be no direct but indirect access on the ground road, that each lot be at least 140 foot feet, and that they have a shared detention pond and shared internal driveway and access to the abutting private areas. I have a motion from Ms. Hobby to grant the request basically as presented. I have second, Dr. Howell. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, good luck with it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate your service to the city. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. I read them, didn't see anything. Anybody got anything that they want to change or correct? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? I have a motion from Gretchen to grant the request of the second. Second, Nancy. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous, thank you very much. Before I get to adjournment, is there any business, new business, old business, anything we need to talk about? I'd like to say something. Um, I know the meeting was kind of emotionally charged, and I appreciate what y'all do, but in both of these cases that um, we've been involved with, uh, both staff, city, and county have really done a lot of work to make the right thing happen for the right reasons, and they're doing a good job for y'all. So just want to say thank you to them and y'all. Thank you very much on their behalf. Thank you. Any other new business, old business, or are we done? I think we're done. Um, just for Matt to call us on the board commissioner's agenda for reappointment. Um, have you all's letter supporting the reappointment. So we're okay. Okay. Congratulations. The city has two seats open for the reappointment. Okay. And Matt, you three want weeks. to apply for one? Good. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, September's meeting will not be the first Tuesday. Uh, we moved it to the second Tuesday because of Labor Day and potential for everybody to travel. Uh, if you want to come Tuesday, the first Tuesday, you're welcome to. We might be by yourself. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. We stand adjourned. This has been a great one. Well, I try not to be on it. This was a great one. It was me. Thank you.